the Married Woman's Property Act. The 1st of January, 1887. But there were some updates. In 1969, 70, 75, 95, and the latest is 2004. Section 1, short title. This act may be cited as the Married Woman's Property Act. Section 2, capacity of married women. Subject to the provisions of this act, a married woman shall <coughs> A. Be capable of acquiring, holding and disposing of any property and B. Be capable of rendering herself as being rendered liable in respect of any tort, contract, debt, or obligation. I looked up the word tort online. Here it says it is a wrongful act or an infringement of a right other than under a contract leading to legal liability. Okay. C. Be capable of suing and being sued either in tort or in contract or otherwise. And D. Be subject to the law relating to bankruptcy and to the enforcement of judgments and orders. In all respect, if she were a F-E-M-E-S-O-L-E, Femisole, if I'm pronouncing it right, I looked up that word online, it says, it's a woman without a husband especially one that is divorced okay oh so this seems to be saying that she is able and to do these things and is liable to this list of items whether she is married or divorced all right section three property of married women subsection 1 subject to the provisions of this act all property which a immediately before the 1st of June 1941 was the separate property of a married woman or held for her separate use in equity or b belongs at the time of marriage to a woman married on or after the first day of June 1941 or the property which C on or after the first day of June 1941 is acquired by or de develops upon a married woman shall belong to her in all respects as if she were a divorced woman or without a husband and may be disposed of accordingly so it seems to be saying that whatever property she has it belongs to her as if she did not have a husband provided that nothing in this section shall interfere with or render inoperative any restriction upon anticipation or alignment attached to the employment of any property by virtue of any provision attaching such a restriction contained in any enactment passed before the first day of June 1941 or any instrument executed before the first day of September 19. 41. 
subsection 2. Any instrument executed on or after the first day of September 1941 shall, in so far as it purports to attach to the employment of any property by a woman, any restriction upon anticipation or alienation, which could not have been attached to the employment of that property by a man, be void. Any instrument executed on or after the first day of September 1941 shall in so far as it purports to attach to the employment of any property by a woman. So it seems to be saying here that she may use that property, whatever property she has, unless there is some legal restriction on the use. Alright, subsection 3. For the purposes of the provisions of this section relating to restrictions upon anticipation or alienation, a an instrument attaching such a restriction as aforesaid executed on or after the first day of September 1941 in pursuance of an obligation imposed before that date to attach such a restriction shall be deemed to have been executed before the said first day of September 1941. B. A provision contained in an instrument made in exercise of a special power of appointment shall be deemed to be contained in that instrument only and not in the instrument by which the power was created and C, the will of any testator. Testator. In looking up the meaning of testator online, I found a definition here that a testator is a person who has made a will or given a legacy. Okay. So, the will of any testator who dies after the first day of, Sep of December 1945 shall be deemed to have been executed after the first day of September 1941. Here it says, notwithstanding the actual date of the execution thereof. Okay. Section 4. Abolition of husband's liability for wife's tort and antenuptial contracts, debts and obligation. I looked up the word, the meaning of antenuptial contract online. The Merriam-Webster dictionary says it is an agreement made between a couple before marrying in which they give up future rights to each other's property in the event of a divorce or death. All right. Subject to the provisions of this act, the husband of a married woman shall not, by reason only of being her husband, be liable. So, if he is married to her, it doesn't mean that he is liable to these things. A. In respect of any tort committed by her, whether before or after the marriage, or in respect of any contract entered into, or debt or obligation incurred by her before the marriage, or B. To be sued or made a party to any legal proceeding brought in respect of any such tort, contract, debt, or obligation. So, here, it says that he is not liable to be sued for his wife's debt. 
in respect of any tort committed by her or, or debt or obligation incurred by her before the marriage. So if she owed money before the marriage, it doesn't mean that when he marries her, he is obligated to pay the debt. Alright, savings. Section 5, savings. Nothing in this act shall A. During converture, which began before the first day of January 1887. It should be coverture. I looked up the meaning online. It says, the legal status of a married woman considered to be under her husband's protection and authority. So during coverture which began, nothing in this act shall during coverture which began before the first day of January 1887 affect any property to which the title, whether vested or contingent and whether in position, reversion and or reminder, right, it shall not affect any property to which the title of a married woman occurred before that date except property held for her separate for her separate use in equity b nothing in this act shall affect any legal proceeding in respect to any tort if proceedings had been instituted in respect thereof before the first day of June 1941. Nothing in this act shall see enable any judgment or other or order against a married woman in respect of a contract entered into or debt or obligation incurred before the first day of June 1941 to be enforced in bankruptcy are to be enforced otherwise than against her property. Section 6 provisions as to husband. I will continue by reading section 6 in another video.